the women's final four, Minnesota and Duke, and it's getting closer. Monique Curry hits and draws the foul. The three-point play pulls Duke to within one run. All righty, and here's a reminder. Tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues in the Midwest. In Norman, Oklahoma, it'll be Stanford taking on the Lady Balls at 9 Eastern. All a part of a week of madness presented by Harley Davidson on ESPN. That will be the last spot in the Final Four, and I saw one locked up last night by LSU, Simone Augustus. If she's watching this ball game, I'm going to salute her again. Do about 29, 30 points on the board. She's knocking down 70% of her shots in the NCAA tournament. Outstanding player. I saw one of her replays last night. It just, I was spellbound again. Newbie. What a, what a shot off the timeout. Unbelievable. Well, he picked an excellent time to come out of his frozen state. Now that'll get you healthy. And once again, the penetration and the five. Sticks it and going left, Ron. You mentioned earlier he had a little trouble with the bounce left. Well, I mean, it shows you know, good athletes adapt to situations. They're going to continue to take put the right away from him and make him go to the left. Who's the last Iowa State turnover ball in this ball game? They have not turned it over now for like eight and yeah. a half minutes. They had two in the first minute of the second half, and that foul is going to be on Rutgers. Uh, the ability to shoot the ball after a timeout, that's like calling the three play. You think it's going to intricate offense. Just get it to this guy, Jimmy. That little nylon from deep. Unbelievable range. Crap, every ball game, six, eight, ten points a game are decided coming out of a timeout. Mm -hmm. Chalk up three that time to Rutgers. Well, they had 15 points in the first half from threes. They calmed down, and that could set up their dribble game or with Lemons on it on the floor. You know, and it's some inside game, although he's not there right now. Billy, we talked about Iowa State shot 59% in the first half. They had 13 turnovers. Only two turnovers this half, and you just creep back in. That's only 57%. Roman gets a piece of this when Roman came up empty. Shields for a quick first step. Gets between the two defenders, and it's going to be a Jackson Roman. One thing I question sometimes is how much of a hurry you are to get a shot up. Like, they don't get a chance to load up people. Jones was in the low post area begging for the basketball. Fortunate to get to the free throw line. You know, Wayne Morgan's done a great job this year with uh, Jackson Broman. Broman, a kid that kind of sometimes can march to the beat of his own drum. And Wayne has done a terrific job, I think, handling him his senior year. Well, you could be late. Exactly. And tonight, I'm bookended by greatness. Greatness on the right, greatness oh, on the left. Oh, oh, I thought, I thought you meant the Bruce Brothers on Iowa State. <laughs> it's elder greatness, but it's greatness. Look at the one. <laughs> Rutgers back on top by one. About to go under 10 minutes left in his first semifinal game. Jefferson for three. Now, they were just running a high-low play, and he jacked it up. Why be in such a hurry? A nice hustle here by the big... This time, Holman. Unbelievable effort by their two big people. Yeah, I'm not sure you can play the game any harder than Holman play. No. Nope. Again, you grew up on an Iowa farm. Your parents are dairy farmers. You're used to the work ethic. Getting up early. You don't have that ethic. Or getting in early. One of the two. Bob Sunbold, one of the assistant coaches at the Iowa State, was up and was hollering at Jefferson, pointing to his head, saying, use your head. Don't come down and take that early shot. Boy, that shot is rejected right there, but a foul inside, and that may be Jefferson, who they got. Here's a look at uh, Bob. Now, Bob says that John Sunbold is his brother. John says Bob is my brother. Well, you know, there's no question. I've never seen Bob shoot, but I'm sure John is the better shooter of the two. <laughs> of the video. His son's alongside there. Uh, I watched his son point. shoot, and his son takes after his Uncle John. Thank goodness. Oh, what a break for him. But the, the little matchup zone, they got the open look, and then joins gathering at the rim for the foul. Jefferson with his third foul as the break is taken. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, catch the 2004 Powerade Jam Fest. And at 9 Eastern, some of the best high school players in the nation meet in the McDonald's High School All-American game. All a part of a week of madness presented by Harley Davidson on ESPN. And for more information, log on to ESPN.com.
Hey, Ron, uh, Tennessee's going to try to lock up their berth to the Final Four later tonight. Candace Parker from Naperville, Illinois, she's already committed to Tennessee. She's in the dunk contest. She wins the dunk contest this year on the boys' side. You're kidding. Mm. I'm telling you. Have you ever read any bestsellers or? No. Oh, I'm just curious. I know you're busy analyzing everything from, uh, <laughs> well, the dog jumping in the summer, correct? Big air dogs. Well, uh, you know, the, where the they... paws go, the body must follow. <laughs> The elevation, the full extension. <laughs> I've heard you this summer, but you know, this Rutgers, uh, speaking of elevation and full extension, and the football team under Greg Schiano, five and seven. Nobody expected that round, right? I mean, what a nice turnaround. And Bob Bouquet hired him, and of course, Gary Waters. There's Bob, and what a success story. Uh, they've got it going a little bit now. Lately, uh, three years in a row in the MIT, uh, the home court, such a great advantage, and as you mentioned, starting with kids from their home state. So, Joins, speaking uh, of young successes, high school teammate of Carmelo Anthony. Mm -hmm. Got both of the free throws. And also just picked up his first five. And I'm sure he got most of the rebounds as Carmelo uh, checked them up, too. Joins. Big part of it is his second five. And team five number seven on Rutgers. Well, Iowa State, when they had the lead, it was because their bigs were running and they were keeping them involved in the half court. In the last two or three minutes, Iowa State guards have gone a little crazy on them. Well, you know, it's funny that balance that you have to have as a good team. And it's really directed by the guards. And in, in essence, the point guy, and Blaylock would be the guy this time. Because Wayne and Furt messed him up at Syracuse and said, I'm ready. I'm ready to be a head coach. And he's very patient. We got that opportunity. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the sadness of Larry Eustacey, who I'm delighted to see, is getting his opportunity again. And there's Blaylock, like the point guy, trying to contain the bounce here. Well, keep an eye on those Iowa State turnovers. They averaged 17 turnovers in their losses, only 13 in their wins. They're nearing 17 right now. Jump. Exani, that's going to be a jump ball. Possession says Iowa State. See, now, if I'm Exani, I'm going to say the Shields. You got stuck. Spin dribbling, you throw it to me. It's like late in the shot clock. What do yeah. you want me to do? I mean, he got stuck in a tough position, untenable. Well, 15 turnovers, only two this half on Iowa State. We are now under 10 minutes to play. Rutgers, 13 turnovers for them. Nice back to Holman, and that ball is altered inside. I think it's the big fellow who got a hand on a joint. Here's Joel Wiggin. Show by Roman. Nice hands. Look at this. Wigan missed it from point blank range. Probably one too many passes from that closer range. What are you doing with the pounds? Value the ball. Use them. Too late. Doobie. Exciting. What great hustle on his part. He and Holman are a lot alike. Blue, blue caught up, but they just give you everything they got. They got steps for a foul before. Now, Jimmy, I know you're shaking your head. Doobie's taking a lot of deep shots, which is okay. He's very talented. But on a fast break, you've got to give the ball up. you got to partner alongside. You had an angle out in front of us at half court, yep. and I think that's why Gary took him out. Exactly. you got to pay your dues a little bit. You love clubs that uh, spread the floor in their transition as well as they spread the floor in their half court. Mm -hmm. Get away from each other, pass that ball. Got the numbers and convert. Looks like Jefferson came down and, and put up that uh, quick three, and he's back on the bench. Mm -hmm. well, that's the only way. Pine time certainly gets people's attention. Still the best motivator of all time. Huh? It sure is. Coach's best friend. Excuse me, Rod. <laughs> Exciting with his second foul. Eight team foul against the Rutgers, and we'll see if that looms large in this ball game or not. Nope. That ball is missed, and I think we got a foul on number four, Jackson Broman. No, I beg your pardon. It's on 41, George. Now George trying to do some. Now he mentioned he's getting you more time now, uh, Jimmy, and I guess a little small change on the top with joints. Well, Switzerland may have some blood. And the official was trying to send him to the Rutgers bench, and the Rutgers bench was pointing, saying, no, he belongs to them. The neutral corner he should have gone to. <laughs> yeah, you can see it on the front of his uniform. They have to saturate that and uh, make sure it's removed before he can come back in. 
And they may have to change the uniform number if they yeah. can't do it. You may have to do that, which happens uh, a lot of the time. Vic Miller, the trainer, the basketball trainer for Iowa State. See, back when I was playing, Eddie Sutton would have told me, Dykes, take your jersey off, give it to Stinson. <laughs> he made me take my shoe off once to give it to a teammate and let him finish the game. My jersey would have been next. Well, now he treats you nicely, though. He does. Speaks highly of you and your work. Well, he's done some work for himself this year. Isn't that great? Nope, it's not there. They battle for it, and here's Jefferson coming away with it. And Sullivan battling the bigs in there. Jake Sullivan. Now they got a nice spread going. Here's the baseline rubs. Usually slip passes. Roman, they pick him up inside. George couldn't hold on. Did he save it? Nope, stepped on the inline. And it'll be 12 seconds on the shot clock as Jared Holman prepares to check back in to the lineup. 55-52, Rutgers on top with 7.50 remaining. Stinson ready to come back. Meanwhile... Okay, Reb, our situation, a three-point ball game. Rutgers, uh, Jimmy Dykes, you were eavesdropping in the Rutgers huddle. Uh, what was said? Well, I think uh, Gary did a great job, first of all, talking about staying aggressive the last eight minutes of this ball game. And then he talked about getting more ball reversal, and they're wanting to establish some stuff on the inside. So he wants to get that balance going as well, Raph, right now in his offense. You were like a kid trying to get in the game over there. I was, one not uh, But you're right. They both have to do a better job. He's got some variety in his game, bro. He had that jump hook. He mentioned the turnaround jumper. Good with the bounce. They got a perfect trap here. And they get the steal. Stinson, and that's going to be basket interference. What a response by Roman. He read that himself all on his own, Jim. Yeah, like a point guard. You're talking about a guy 6'10", putting on that full court pressure right there. Just a read and react defensively. And then Stinson attacks the rim. Stinson with 16 points. And they go full again. Good judgment now. Shields. Good call. A little late, but it was the right call. There's going to be two fouls against Shields. And with Doobie, if you wonder why he's not at the ballgame, he has experienced cramps. They say he should return. He is up, in fact, now talking with his head coach, Gary Waters. You think Quincy's saying, run a few plays for me? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Well, you know, guards, you really don't have to run things for. But not him, not these guys. No. It's the inside people that suffer and perish on occasion. You know, the difficult thing, and we talked about Iowa State, uh, not a great free throw shooting team, and it is the number four group of the four that made it here to Madison Square Garden. Uh, Rutgers tonight, eight of eight at the free throw line. And I mentioned the inability to get to the free throw line. Ricky Shields, only 76 of 100 coming into this game, which... He's just a little over three a game. I think he should get there more often. Well, Rutgers back to a three-point lead. We're about to go under seven minutes to play. Coming up 20 minutes after this one is over, it will be Michigan taking on Oregon. You know, Jimmy, what I haven't seen a lot of, the screen, the screener sequences that they use. They tried to run it, and they didn't run it. They weren't in the right spots. And it's usually Sullivan. He gets a big and then receives one from a big. Shields with his second foul. I mentioned he forgot his shaver for his head. He was supposed to be clean. He was supposed to be clean. He looks like a dirty tennis ball, I told him today. He said he left it back in Ames. You know, one thing, Jake, we talk about his leadership ability and, the, and everything that, that he contributes to this uh, ball club. He also is a 3.43 uh, great point average in the classroom for his uh, four years' work at Iowa State. He is a student athlete. Well, they say his first four words were Mama, Dada, Kareem, and Magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a junkie. Oh, quick pass. He had Exani. He gets to the free throw line so you can tolerate it. But I thought a nice quick hit and then up. Well, that's what Gary talked about in his timeout. Again, is uh, if he can't get to the low block off the pass, let's attack off that bounce. That's exactly what Shields did that time. Shields, Doobie, those guys now, they quick with that basketball. Froman with his third foul. Coming at the 6.56 mark. First miss by the Scarlet Knights today. As they stay on the line, a lot of guys back off quickly as Amazana comes back in. So this should perk up their defense. 
and also that flashing ability in the lane. Can't uh, look at Gary Waters anymore without thinking about the job he did at uh, Kent Head. Boy, left uh, Stan Heath a terrific club, which vaulted him to the Arkansas job after one year. He went right to Ron Franklin and said Ron did one of his games a few years ago. He and sure did. Thank him for the kind and words. Toledo, Ohio, yeah. yeah. In their conference tournament. Holman backs it in, misses. Roman misses on the tip. And I think he was held. The reason he couldn't jump. Yep. Was it ex -handy, ex -handy. Yeah, he was he was holding on to his arm. You know what these two big guys do well, Jim? Shields, I think. Was it Shields? I think yeah. either one they could have given it to. They body their guy on the shot a little deeper under the rim at such a disadvantage. Offensive rebound and rewarded. So Shields now with three fouls, and it's a double bonus. Ten team fouls against Rutgers. Well, I think Roman at that free throw strike. He went to like 14 or 15 different schools, K through 12. Passed around over in Europe for a while. Again, he only played one year of high school ball, and he grew late. I think between his sophomore and junior year, he really sprouted up. Now, I've been very impressed with this kid's all-around game. Oh, I, I think he knows how to play. There's no yeah. question about it. Keys the defense here with the pressure, got a turnover earlier. I think offensively he keys things with his ability to get himself free and makes great decisions. Consider he didn't start until the senior year in high school. He should have come a long way. There's a case in point. Yeah. He stepped in. Plus the miss. Extension. Look at this rebound. Holman has it rejected. What hustle. Doesn't matter. What a great job, though. They got a technical. On Holman, I think. Yeah. Firing that ball behind his back to the corner. I don't know how malicious this was, Jimmy, only because he's mad at himself. He didn't get what he wanted. Right. And I just love the effort here. Yeah, he's not arguing the call. No. I mean, it's just he's... Plus the fact he got fouled. <laughs> but this, uh, again, you, you've got to love the passion and the effort this kid plays with. Well, uh, that's, that's an unfortunate call. So Holman now has three fouls. There's that adds one on. Yeah. And T. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> balls after you shoot, you go, <laughs> Give me back. Give me the string on that. <laughs> so the two bigs now have the three fouls. Roman and Holman. And Wayne just giving him a few words there. Great control in the sideline, don't you think? Very much so. Don't you understand yes. it, Wayne? Maybe that's what he learned up there besides a lot of things on the offensive end. Coach Bayhill didn't say much. Well, you know what, Wayne, he won more ball games than he lost at Long Beach State. Yeah, that's, that's saying something there, I think. Uh, you see the double there. Nice play. Exani saved it. Shot clock is at 10. A little nickel dimer by Sullivan, and he protests in vain. I will show you one more time. This is what happened to uh, the whole. Uh, uh, that's. Uh, I'm sorry. And particularly at this juncture of the ball game, that's not a technical foul. It wasn't at the official. It wasn't at it. It was at the manager. Didn't bring the water over in time. <laughs> He just flipped it behind his back. That's poor. I think these guys have done a good job, but that one right there, I certainly put an, an asterisk next to that one. Ron, I think what should happen in that case is you stop and say the answer. You shouldn't do that. Yes. Yeah. Don't do it again, and we'll have to do something. You know, it's uh, unfortunate. Stenson pulls up on the jumper, and he cans it. You know, we have not seen his teardrop shot. That was close. He gets in that lane and flicks. Beautifully. But for a slow start, he's now at 20 points, and we're tied as we're just under five and a half minutes to play. Stinson's got that good middle game. I mean, he's a former MVP at the Adidas camp, so he's a type kid that can get you for eight or ten more points with five minutes to go in this game. Ooh, so can he. Wow. Doobie to the ten with the kiss to be nice. You know, they think that he could be maybe one of the all-time greats to ever play for Rutgers. You're talking about guys like Phil Sellers and uh, he just sets you up and measures you with that between the bounce and then the attack. 
I'll tell you what, he can shoot like Bobby Lloyd, but Bobby couldn't put it down on the deck like no. this. Now, Valvano would say he could if he were here, God rest his soul. But that was some backcourt in the old days at Rutgers. And this is the makings of one here. What a talented guy. Talk about Jimmy V. He was known as Mr. Defense on that campus. And he's got a chance to be a star. So Doobie will go to the bench. No, no, think... no just went over to talk to, uh, to Gary. And where do you go now? I think the bigs have to touch it for Iowa State. Marquise Webb into the lineup. See the step out by Lozano. It is blocked. And a three-pointer from Blaylock. They take a lot of them to 42 percent on the year. Tied again, this time at 62. Lemonzana well, has not been in the flow on the offensive end. Let's see if he can get himself going just a little bit. You know, he doesn't fight to hold that low block position. Oh, what a bad play here. But they got the Look at steal. That Which way are they going to go? Oh, no. No. This is the wrong call. If anything, Shields, the play like made a right. wonderful yeah, tip. Oh, my goodness. A bang-banger. You watch the Iowa State player get a hand on the ball, that's a pass, and then he gets fouled. Right, I mean, that's one of those play-ons, and it's unfortunate. You know, that's like blocking a shot, that anticipation of an official as to what could happen, and that's a tough turn of events. Laylock was going for the basketball. Well, he tipped it the, already. The defender was going for his body. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Ref, you haven't seen it yet, I don't think, but that's a very similar play to what happened at the end of the Tennessee Baylor women's game with .2 seconds on the clock. Is that right? But the ball was not even close to being shot. Oh, my God. Ooh. Big turn of events here. Instead of a deuce it the other way, you give it up. The obvious four-point swing prevails. Two guys came in averaging 20 in this tournament. They may get it again. Yep. Once again, Shields getting to the line frequently. That really helps them. Here's that high low. What a nice little set that is, Tim. Boy, All about the turnaround. Wow. Stay with it, I think. I think he's better when he reverses the turn instead of going to his right. Yeah, you might be right. Well, I think he read the defense well. That's what your job is as an offensive player. A little buddy game on the inside. Big screen for a big. A nice little curl, almost Kansas-like how they used to do it. Tough shot. Look at this guy for sure. I mean, they really are aggressive. I don't think they elevate like a lot of guys in the country, but position and understanding. Yeah, they get a ton of rebounds below the rim, yeah. don't they, because of that position. The same play, and they're going with it. And you know what? That was almost. Stinson likes to throw that arm off. That's the second time. He's got to be careful. And, Jimmy, here's that little inside screen. I mentioned Kansas under Roy Williams. They used to run this little curl. And that's the read. High side left, drop step. And the big guy vacates nicely for Roman. He could have jammed it up with his guy. Perfect job of drifting off the guy with the basketball and sealing up the weak side in case the miss was there. I just think they've played, they've been on the same page all evening long, Roman and Holman inside. Well, Roman's got 14 rebounds, Holman with four. And uh, it's scoring 21 points now for, uh, for Stimson. Roman has 14 points and 15 for Holman. You mentioned that uh, you maybe was a little nervous at yeah. home. You ride the subway in this city. You don't stay nervous long. <laughs> or you lose the groceries. <laughs> you count the stops when you sleep, even. <laughs> Six don't sleep. 64, <laughs> Iowa State. All righty, our situation. Two-point lead, Iowa State. You take a look at the brackets. 20 minutes after this game is over, we will see Oregon, Michigan. So who will be the two that make it to the championship game on Thursday? And as we come back on camera, holding uh, the, the parquet right there, do you think Hilton Magic is going to hold up for them? Well, I think I got a chance. You know why? They came and actually got this for me at halftime and took it into the locker room so they could all touch it again. They've got a one-game winning streak with this uh, piece of the hardwood going with them. How about this one? <laughs>
<laughs> a little hardwood up here, too. I, it proves you try anything, right, as exactly. a coach or this as time a team. Year. And right now, I think Rutgers has got to get some points inside, either with the dribble or the bigs touching it. That means Lemon Zonic creating and usually Hill finishing if he gets by. How about McCarville and Whalen putting a knot on the head of Duke right now? I tell you, that's, a, that's as good an inside-outside combo in the women's game. I, I have wondered if a seven seed has ever made it to the women's Final Four. Yeah, I don't they, think they have. Yeah. I think they just ran a play for London Zion and they forced him away from the box. Shot clock is under 10. To me, Bill, he'll drift off that box too easy, though. Yeah, well, that's the leg strength, but that's what he can do, though. You're at a disadvantage of your home and that far from the rim. He's got some ability, Ron. Plus, in fact, Holman has the three foul. Yeah. So, couldn't go out maybe and stick to him as quite as aggressively as he wanted to. Stinson, strong to the hook, and it's scored. And a chance for a three-point play. A little blow by, and then the smoke, the soft swoops at the end. You know what? The ball screens tonight have been set for Stinson so he can drive with his right. They haven't set him up on a ball screen to go left because of that bandaged hand. How about those soft rims at the garden? And that's number four. Kirby gets tagged for that one. I still can't get over the fact that a kid that uh, grew up playing at Rucker Park in the Bronx, his nickname is Blue Collar. I mean, that looks a whole lot more like a Ray Ray or a Sleepy <laughs> to me. Or Showtime. Or Showtime. Or Center Stage. And right now, <laughs> he's sharing it here off Broadway. We've got to stop it here for just a second. You know, on that particular play, I did not see Lemming Sonnen hit anybody. I think they making sure the debris hitting anybody and injuring anybody. You know, and the fans here, obviously very wise basketball fans, they're turning around pointing at the guy who did it. They don't want their team, which is Rutgers, to get a technical foul. Thing that Ernie Kent said to me, he said, What about the neutral floor here? It looks to me like I'm playing at Rutgers. <laughs> a lot of red shirts out there. Three point Iowa State lead. Oh, and Coleman got away with one there. See, this is where he's tough. And that's a good looking basketball play. That is the way to play. Drive the crack, get two to pinch, and kick and get the puppy set. Tied again, under two and a half left. A nice poke away by Hill, huh? May have gotten away with one. Yeah. In the last two minutes, most coaches, every trip down, one of those assistants will be hollering out, rebound the miss. Well, see, I'm not big on Lamazana now. Twice he's gotten it, good things have happened. Here's the third. Well, nice double and aggressively. How about him stepping through? Well, you see how limited his tension very quickly retreated because he didn't want to lose it in that left hand. Yeah. Again, every ball screen sets him up to drive hard right. And boy, he's very lucky. Now they got him for it. They got him for an offensive foul, his second. But what a huge time for it to come when you're tied at 69 and only 90 seconds left. It's tough to turn the corner and be under total control once you get in the lane, Jim. Lamazana does a good job of chasing from behind, and then the help defense steps up. Proper call. Dogs are set. Contact's taken. Uh, basketball is simple when you think of it. Get in the cracks and get a position on the floor where they've got a long way to run, Jim. Yeah, I'm not so sure you can help off of Doobie right now late in the ball game. You're the uh, defender assigned to Doobie, and you're helping down on Lamazana, who has not shown tonight that he can drive from 20 feet and finish from 10. So he's penetrating with the idea of being a passer. Rutgers, one full timeout, as has uh, Iowa State. Two 30s for the Scarlet Knights, only one for Iowa State, and uh, double bonus for both clubs. Possession error goes with Rutgers. Ties a career high at 28 points for Scooby, and 20th turnover against Iowa State. And the numbers are not good, as you said when they turn it over more than 17 times. Yep, they uh, average 17 turnovers in their losses, only 13 turnovers in their wins. Well, you think of both ends now, the big guys need to be involved. Perlman on the one end, whether it's a decision or the recipient of a high-low. 
And then the other end, Lemonzana, just really playing solid. You think of Gary's massaging all night with his foul problems early, had to yep. rest him, yo-yo him a little bit, just to have him down the stretch. So Minnesota advances the seven seed wins over the number one seed Duke, 73 wow. to 70. Uh, wait a minute, they didn't have time on the not a final. Not a final. 33 seconds left. Sorry, that is a huge upset if it happens. A lot of folks felt like this was the best team that Gail Gessenforce has ever had at Duke. Pretty again, the wow. drive, draw, and finish. Climbing the hill, Duby. Well, he was the recipient, and now Sherry. His thanks. Beth Adrian Hill has limited offensive range, and when you catch it from three and finish it from one, that's pretty limited. A high percentage spot of the floor. Terrific drive of that basketball by Doobie. Watch it, the defender rotate over. You've got to rotate over when they get that deep. Freeze up an easy one inside. And you can see Jefferson getting back too late. He's got to come away from the top to yes. help out. It's interesting, both clubs doing a better job in their deploying after a halftime. Remember we said they were punched up quite yes. a bit, yep. particularly Iowa State. Same thing now with Rutgers. Spread, make the defense run a great area, and try and cover the dribble, and they've been extremely successful. If you're Wayne Morgan, what are you uh, what are you charting on the board over there, Bill? I think the bigs have to get a touch. Uh, you know, they've run that little inside screen. I'd run some power game. Make the refs make a call. Get to the free throw line or score or do both. Sullivan has just struggled to get a catch in this ball game. Now he's on the floor in that far corner, but he's a confident enough shooter. He can go 38 minutes in a ball game without knocking one down and then get a dagger on you. He is not afraid to drill it either. Not at all. Oregon, Michigan coming up next. And actually it's 20 minutes. That's how long they'll have to warm up. 20 minutes after the conclusion of this one. Here's Broman. Back there to Sullivan. They set the play. Three-pointer on the way. And the giveaway. I'm not so sure I would have banked on the three. I mean, I, I think you can get more with this team going in and out for that shot. They're such a good passing team. They feel for one another. That was trying to get it all quickly. If anything, you could have used Sullivan as a decoy to stretch that defense. Hammer that ball inside with more ease. Rutgers has been deadly at the free throw line in this game tonight. The 11 of 14. The limit 77%. Those the guys you want down the end line. The end of the game. 61 seconds left in the ball game, trying to make it a two-score affair. And Marquise and Duby and Wigan, they make free throws down the end of the game. So important. So much for that though. <laughs> Still say you get the high percentage shot. Yeah, and plenty of time. Yeah. Stretch the game. Stinson can't get it. It's going to be one and out again. Roman tries for the tie-up, and he comes up with the foul. I believe it's number four. Yeah. And Ron, back-to-back -back possessions for Iowa State when they had to have a bucket. The two bigs didn't touch the basketball. Right. Jump shots. They will kill you. Not that it was a bad look. Right. But they can do some damage and punish you. Well, what a great house here tonight at Madison Square Garden. As we told you, Rutgers is only 45 miles away, and there's a train stop right there. And they have come in big numbers this evening. I don't know if they'll make the train back. That's, there is a curfew on the train out of Natchez here. The perimeter game has uh, pretty much been the story, and they've got just enough of the balance of some inside off the push, off the attack of the rim. They have Rutgers with a lead right now, but this guy has flat out stroked that basketball, has caught it in rhythm, has shot through passing lanes at times. And again, he may end up being one of the all-time best to ever put on a Rutgers uniform. And I think he's just got a nice gait about him, too. He glides, but he's got blow by ability around him. Billy, 6 of 10, 60% tonight in this ballgame. Mm. Talk about clutch. And that's uh, just a terrific play on penetration, too. I think that's what he's got to do a little bit more of. You've got to run out on him, Jim, and you've got to be in control because he's explosive and he's unselfish. You know what, talking to Rutgers coaches, I love how they explained Quincy Doobie to him. They said he he wants to be great. Some kids are afraid of that. Wow. They're afraid of getting to that level. This kid is not. He wants to be a great player. He thirsts for it, huh? Yes. And I, again, do believe. You started the game with that. <laughs> He's done nothing to make me change my thoughts. 
I still think two. That's that's my theory. Yes. Get the two guard if you want to give it up quickly. Stretch this game out. The three puts you on the bus. Bill, it's a new career high for him. 30 points. New high water mark. Now looking for threes all the way now. This is where you get in trouble. Stenson swishes it. Looking to see if they call the timeout. They did not at 38.6. Well, they were trying to give it. They didn't get there. New career high for Stenson. He's got 28 points. They should give this to Sullivan. That's my officiating. Yeah, yeah good, but good officiating. You know, if you got a choice and one guy's got some problems. I've always felt that free throw shooting in, in a tight ball game the last couple of minutes, if you're with the ball and you get fouled, your first thought should be something along the lines of, you just fouled the wrong guy. I'm going to step up and make you play. you got to have that attitude. Have to. And, and I think he does. I mean, he's just so confident when he gets to the free throw line. Same rhythm. Do the same thing each time. Well, the coach blesses himself. <laughs> Misses it, so it's still a one-trip ball game. 75-72. Go to the rim, quick. He got fouled. Good play. Go. Good play. He got 21 seconds, 20 and change. You make the two, you get your defense set, maybe get a five-second violation or a quick denial and a slap back to your teammate. More good options than bad options when you attack. Mm -hmm. Eleven of twelve at the free throw line tonight. Converts the first one. Two-point game. Lamazano and Shields come back into the lineup for the Scarlet Knights. Sani is back into the lineup as well. I would think he'll take it out. That's my guess. This is not a great free throw shooter, Sani. Gets the second. One point game. 75 74. 20.8 seconds remaining. And they almost get it. They all get it. You're exactly right, Billy. Had to call the timeout. When it goes against you, you think the guy counts in halves. So I understand now we do have a final, and that's a ball game between Minnesota and Duke. And there it is, Minnesota wins over Duke, 82-75 in the Mideast. So the seventh seed is heading for the Final Four. Brian, I know we're kind of guessing, I'm with you. I don't think a seventh seed has ever advanced to the Final Four on the women's side because it's been so dadgum number one heavy seeded with the Yukons and the Tennessees over the years. And when Lindsey Whalen got healthy late in the year for Minnesota, a lot of folks started talking about that ball club had a serious threat in them, and they certainly are. How about the crowd last night up in Connecticut? Oh, terrific. Terrific. Once again, huh? Yes. Good season. I think they believe they would be. Tell you what, I salute this crowd here tonight. This has been a terrific atmosphere. You've got to get guys now to screen well and cut well. It's very important. And you can run the baseline. It's a live situation. A lot of teams put, in my mind now, too many people down there. I agree. congests the pot. The defenders can spoil things for you. So the first of two semifinal contests tonight. The winner of this one gets either Oregon or Michigan at 7 o'clock Eastern on Thursday evening here at the Garden. We have to follow your uh, thought. I've always been a fan of putting your two best guards down here around the free throw lane, letting them screen for each other, screen and pop back to the ball. Your two bigs at, half, at the timeline, if they get hung up, they make it a foot race with your bigs. Now you get all 10 guys down here and a lot of traffic. Too, ma too many people. Absolutely. And they've got everybody down here now. Uh, unless you run people out. I can see that too. Like right away, sprint your wings and then run a cross screen at the foul line. Now they're going to let Exani have a touch over here. So they've got a problem here. They have a real problem. Look at this. Well, he didn't launch it out of bounds. What? Oh, okay. Well, we weren't there. I thought it went the other way. Stetson may have had a hand in there. This is one of the toughest angles to get the ball in. 
And Zani's the guy they're leaving free, and he doesn't want it because well, he knows. I don't think Gary wants him to have it either. Yeah. Nothing, uh, you know, I wouldn't bet against him. It's just numbers-wise, you prefer other people. Well, he's going to have to touch it. And got got right a hot potato. They got numbers. They don't need it. Heady play. Good play. Make the deuce. Could have been problems for you. We've had a chance for a three-point chance at the other end of time. Here's that call on the sideline, Jim. Let's see. Uh, you can see the hand. This yeah. is, uh, bad hand was in there. Really helped. Good call by the officials. Jamie Lucky, I believe, was on top of that one. And very lucky for Rutgers, I might add. Final timeout being taken by Iowa State. And as you saw the graphic just a moment ago, as we had mentioned earlier, two career highs in this ball game tonight for Doobie and, uh, and also for Curtis Stinson. And Stinson only had three points in the first half, so one heck of a comeback here in the second half of play. Billy, talk strategy with us. Well, when you think of this, uh, depending on the situation on the free throw line, you come down, you can get an opportunity with a three. So it, it all depends on what happens on the next one. You know, obviously, if they don't make any, the deuce is what you're going to look for. And I, I would think, again, quickly and get it inside. Or with the drive. Exactly. And create and, and get right to it. And I think both coaches, Ron, the last thing they tell their troops as they break huddle, rebound the basketball. Because yeah. more times than not, with less than 15 seconds to go, that's the thing that's going to determine the outcome of the ball game. So 11.8 seconds left in the ball game. It is Rutgers by one. They're at the free throw line in the double bonus situation. And one timeout left for Rutgers, which becomes important on inbounding the basketball in particular. But there's a lot of speed dribblers on Iowa State, too. So I mean, the ability of bringing it up the floor, you don't need the timeout. Obviously, they don't have one, but the quick rush and then attack the glass. How about the two huge performances on the world's biggest stage tonight, huh? Out of Stinson and Doobie? <laughs> huge numbers. Well, Shields prepares to go to the line, and uh, the numbers on him tonight, 7 of 9 at the free throw line. And all year long, solid at 76. backs everybody off. Now this is the, the decision right now. How are you going to match, contain, you want the dribble at least to go one different path. And I would say you got to guard for the three now. Yep. Keep an eye on zero in white because he's the one that can burn you. And this guy can too. Shot the line. Got it. Wow. Zero in white. Better tag him. Oh, they got a foul or a timeout? They got the last timeout. Yeah, the final timeout. Of the I, I thought they might give the foul and not let them shoot the three in that particular play. I mean, I'm not a fan of it, but I thought that was one of the possibilities when you mentioned Stinson yeah. had the dribble. You know, we talked about Jake Sullivan can go 38 minutes without a three. Unabashed, Doesn't right? bother him. No. Though. I mean, the gutsy yeah. performance on the corner. Well, you know what? This deserves Jimmy Dykes, the little guy, raising the level. Deep in the corner. Possibly oranges. Anything you want at the, the grocery store for this. And Stinson with the look to give him the opportunity as well. Now, 1.3, it's a catch and one bounce. Yeah, at, at most. Right? Yes. So and, and the ability of the cutters is extremely important. What angle they go at, what lane they create for the inbound passer. I would think a big will be on the ball, Jim. Don't let him have yep. vision and see how the other people deploy. A back screen sometimes by a guard. You run somebody to the rim, you consider the lob, and then if not, the screener pops to the ball. That's one of the things you might be able to do. And when you're not familiar, which Iowa State and Rutgers are not common opponents throughout the year, you can get burned late in a ball game because you don't have all the tapes to break down and know everything. Now they're checking out to see where the time should be when the ball goes out of bounds. No, you're right. There's not that familiarity right. or consistency. I'm sure the most, maybe the end of the season, five or six tapes as you get into it. See if they get this number right. It's not out yet. 
About right, huh? Maybe a yeah, another close. tenth at the most. Not in the frame there, but you yeah. see where uh, the whistle was probably blown. Now, I, I think you've got to force the ball backwards defensively. Don't let them go forward. And they got the big guy coming in here. Number he 54, will, Skoglund. Andrew Skoglund. And he will take up vision of the passer on the inbounds man. I don't want to have any discussion with him at 1600 the college boards incidentally. Uh, he's got to be as big as he can. Don't let it come down the side. I don't think this is good the way he's playing it. He's letting no, it come down not. the sideline. That's yeah, dangerous. Big. Get up, big fella. And here it comes. Ramazan is a three. He walked. He walked. He walked down the counter. Number 54 in wide in the ball game. A got him big move. So he That's comes an assist. Out and Sullivan comes right back into the lineup. And what you got to be careful of here. And well, just watch if he moves these feet. That's He's, a frozen spot. Yep. You just, there you, there no question about it. You can establish a pivot foot just like you picked up your dribble, and that's it. That's what coaches tell you to do. Lock in with the one foot. Big fella did his job, didn't he? He sure did. They're going to leave him in now, maybe for the possibility of getting to the rim or screening the big body. No clock movement, so that's to be the key sure. substitute uh, for uh, Sullivan. Stinson's going to try and shake his guy somehow. And they're not as big on the ball. Jefferson's going to get some vision. Get it up, get it up. Oh, he hit the front of the iron. Wow, right on it, too. I'm telling you. <laughs> so we're heading to overtime in his first semifinal game. And let's look at the shot that tied it up by the senior, Jake Sullivan. Well, he runs the baseline great. He knows how to get himself free. And, and I think Stinson with the response, Jimmy, just terrific here. But the little guy stepping up in magnificent fashion. You can chase him for 39. You better chase him for 40. Send it in there. So we're back, and it's overtime in the first semifinal game. Now, a couple of situations to keep an eye on. Lomazano, four personal fouls for Rutgers. And for Iowa State, uh, it is uh, Vroman with four. Jared Holman has three. Stinson also with four personal fouls. And I was just handed a stat here. Uh, Mike Green, the SID, they're two and ten, Iowa State in their last 12 overtime. So that's got to be over a couple of years. Mm. So they're due. That doesn't bode well or they're due. He, <laughs> exactly. One time out each way. I wonder during the break between regulation and OT if Iowa State was looking around for their, uh, Knock their on board wood, here. Huh? Knock on wood here in front of me. Well, right now, if they're going to prevail, I think they've got to start recognizing 51 Holman and number four Roman. Rose with the ball in the air, and it's going to go to Rutgers. I'm too tired to say, minute. <laughs> we got another one to go, big fella. Yeah, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm good. I just <laughs> love this. Are you kidding me? A tough shot. And look who's there with the perfect checkout. Never left his feet. Broke. Tough shot is usually a kind way of saying bad shot. Yeah, exactly. Nice penetration. They lifted every one. A save by Axani. Go through Lemonzana again. Now, this is the matchup because you see Stinson on Lemonzana. Look who's there. Axani had a block. He does a great job. He's a hard worker. Couldn't finish. Roman with the block, and Boris Stenson taking a chance with his four fouls. Well, you know, that moment <laughs> occupied Lamazana as well, too. And he got a nice lane to the 10. If Rutgers loses this ball game, they'll look back several times at poor transition defense. Mm -hmm. They have not really recovered well. you got to run with a purpose. you got to have your head on a swivel, stop basketball, things they haven't done. Webb should have kept his dribble alive. He could have gone right to the rim. Newby. Nice job. Nice job using the dribble. Very creative. Boy, isn't he smooth? He is. Left he, hand. He, 
every once in a while he might take a long jacket. Right. Slowly, he's getting away from it, I think. He's playing within himself. Nice. Sullivan got the screen out high from Stinson. Now he's going to come back, shoot it again. Couldn't get it to go. Coming down the stretch, disdain the J, I think. Get it inside or use the bounce. Particularly with uh, Lamazano with four fouls. Sure. Nice dish. Once again here, Doobie penetrates Stinson. Gets a piece. That's five on Stinson. He has uh, blown by people. 90, 94 feet all evening long. Again, that's a lack of transition defense out of Rutgers. And this end, I just think Toby, nice hesitation, gets a little brush screen, and now the little floater. We talked about the teardrop on the other side, which Stinson, he possesses one as well. And that's it. I'm not mistaken. Yep, Stinson with five. Career high, 32 points for him. Only had three at halftime. 29 in the second half with a total of 32. Now, Blaylock's going to have to play solid. And, you know, in a way, I'm not saying it's a blessing because you want your best performer. Now they might think of the building blocks a little bigs. more, you know? I agree. I will stay. So what Doobie understands is, as a young kid, even when he's moving in his shot to his like that time to his left, he still keeps those shoulders square to that rim. You know what I wouldn't do if I was been on that line a long time? Yes. You freeze yourself yeah. there if you're not careful. So much for that. Nothing but court. Tonight, that rim has looked like a bushel basket to him. I think the last month it has. Yeah. Talking to Ernie Kent off camera at halftime, he said, you try to tell me this NIT doesn't mean something to kids. Well, Watching the effort in this one. But you know, it keeps the balls out of the closet. You prove something to yourselves, to your school, and it gets you ready for next year. And again, the bumps for Sullivan. A pretty good reaction defensively. Well, there's where you want it if you're an Iowa State fan right now. Nice step through. Didn't come up with a good shot, but heck of an offensive maneuver. Sullivan, the runner, not there. And he that's automatic. He gets to the free throw line, generally speaking. Now, very clever. Jimmy mentioned it earlier. He has a nice understanding of how to get people airborne and then do something creative. I mean, he really sells that pump fake. I mean, you buy in defensively that he's going to knock that shot down with his the ball movement, the head movement, and I like how his eyes lock in on the rim when he's trying to sell that ball fake. He understands it. <laughs> he begged that one home. <laughs> uh, here's that ability. Just your eyes, your rise, and Xandy gets caught on the tough side, even if you're that size. Jake Sullivan in December is high school, retired his jersey. Out of Oakdale, Minnesota, Tartan High School. So we're tied again at 81. Better stuff this half and overtime. Use the bounce. Good luck. Just don't have much second opportunities, do they? You know, good look and really pretty good defense that time by Roman. Kept his eyes locked in and Lama's on his midsection, challenged his shot, moved his feet pretty well. Hey guys, that's 20 rebounds for Roman. Set play on the dribble handoff. You know, he's leaning backwards where they had numbers if they went the other way. Yep. by Lamanzana. Great effort. Exani has got 17 rebounds. See how they spread it really opens up the middle too. Pretty look. Pretty look. Penetrate. Look, and then power to the 10x, and he 
Well, he's got eight points to go with his 17 rebounds. What a ball game. Lost the handle. They're lucky that they held on to it. Wow. And Holman. They are letting them play on right now. That was Lemonzani did a great job, I think, didn't you? Yeah. Established terrific position away from the rim. Shields picks up his fourth foul. Ron Franklin, along with Jimmy Dykes, and uh, the governor, Bill Raftery, coming to you from Madison Square Garden, our first semifinal game. And if Roman is down, is it a cramp? I think so. He pointed to his calf like it's a cramp. He's been out there an awfully long time, and providing energy on both ends of the floor, 18 minutes in the first half. I don't remember going out this half, do you? No, he's been out there for the duration, I believe. At 38 minutes, uh, he has played already. And right here, this is just, I think, pretty good defense, and normally you get that call. And he comes down right there. That's when the uh, Cavs tighten up on him, and they got to kick one or the other. But and they're going to take him out simply because they don't want to get that charge time out. He's only one remaining for each team. That's the only rest he's got in all game. I tell you, another real warrior in this ball game. We talked about him as Exani with all this rebound. That guy's 17. Just, yeah. Roman's got 20. A lot of positive intangibles out of a kid like Exani there on the left. Plus, he's a double major in economics and exercise science. He reads the Wall Street Journal every day, so you know he's happy here right oh, now. So maybe you get some investment counseling. I need it. 15 lead changes, 11 ties. And because of the injury to Roman, Neal is going to come in to shoot the free throw. And you know what's interesting, too? You know, when you have a guy like Exani, it's a great example for kids. You don't have to be a star to help a team or be a factor. Certainly. Just uh, do your job. 67% in the free throw line. And Rudy gets an opportunity. A lot of times a guy like Exani, his uh, role is described as do, does the dirty work. I think it's the necessary work is what it is if you're going to win ball games, Absolutely. He got six points in six minutes when they were down to Iowa. Became a folk hero in Ames because of that one effort. Missed them both. And they keep it. No, go the other way. That's a tough position to be put in. Two-point lead, Rutgers with the basketball. And now Neil just to make up for it and guard his guy and be solid. That's how you do it. And Rutgers, you don't expect a whistle to be blown here. You are strong with that basketball. Value it dearly. And run some clock, too. Open middle, dangerous. And a bump. And he just sort of owns the playground right now, doesn't he? Whatever he wants to do. Smooth, under control, get a feel of the guy behind you, take the hit, almost with a chance for three. That perimeter game for Rutgers, tough to match up with so far in this tournament. Came in averaging 20 apiece, and uh, Quincy's done his job again tonight. Both of them have, really. Boy, that ball is coming down wet, Jimmy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's barely <laughs> touching net. Pretty high. Froman is going to check back into the lineup. He is hobbling, but uh, he's not going to miss the final 33.9 seconds. We'll be right back. Say, always a pleasure. So look at the game summary. Rutgers up by three. You see the shooting percentages. Free throws, 82%. Rutgers, 73% for the Cyclones. And if you're wondering about other records, do be at 35. The NIT record is George Mikan, 1945, 53 points. Did you work the game? <laughs> I think that's no, the I know you enjoyed it. <laughs> Doobie has the record, though, as far as games in Madison Square Garden. But you know what? It could be broken in our next game by a guy named Luke Jackson. He's capable of going for 40 plus. By the way, that's when they had a keyhole. I don't know if you got to look at this one. That's, it does have a smile. Almost didn't draw iron. Go for the quick dose. Three point game. We're just under 30 seconds to play. And First got, overtime. We got Froman using. Still got time. Yeah, extend the length of the game. That's yeah. all Iowa State's trying to do right now. And Roman screamed. I thought they could have dumped it down to him. Webb on Sullivan. Gotta stay at home. That's the play.
play they love to hold. That's too deep. That's that NBA line that confuses them. The giveaway jump ball. Should be a jump ball. It'll stay with Iowa State. That, that is a great point, what you just said. They thought that they were at the three-point line, and they've been pushed out to the NBA three. And, you know, it's also the fellow that dribble handoff. He sometimes is confused, hands it to the shooter. That's too high. Now, Jimmy, I think they got to go three right now. They do now. Now, this is the question we asked before. Do you give the foul and not let them knock you down? I mean, I'm not in favor, and a lot of guys are. I don't know how you feel. Well, I think you uh, go straight up, and at worst, you head into another overtime. Depends when, too. Maybe if it gets down real late, you might try it. Sullivan on this weak side block. Stitcher didn't even want to look. They yeah. Get a screen. There he is again to the corner. Got to get it in. He's got a dribble in this shot now. Under five seconds. Tried to draw the foul. Couldn't get it. Rebounded. Rutgers and the Scarlet Knights would advance to the championship game with an 84-81 overtime victory over Iowa State. Okay. To Dave Repson. Okay, Ron, thank you very much. A very exciting first game there at Madison Square Garden. I am here with Fran Fraschel. We'll get you back out to the garden in a few minutes. 20 minutes between games here, so it'll be Michigan and Oregon going at it next. And I'll tell you what, an exciting one there and boding very well for Rutgers fans going forward here the next few years with what Quincy Doobie did. Well, we saw two great freshmen, Curtis Stinson for Iowa State, but Gary Waters is building a Rutgers program. He's going to have to do it around New York and New Jersey kids. Quincy Doobie is the first New York kid that he signed. Tonight, a career-high 35. He's a brilliant shooter. Comes out of the great high school program, Grady High School in Brooklyn, and this is a good omen day for Rutgers basketball. Seton Hall has gotten it done with local kids. St. John's has to get it done with local kids, but it's a good sign for Gary Waters. Quincy Doobie He's a nice guy to build around. Yeah, first 20 win season for them since the 82 83 season, and they are still going. Gary Waters standing by right now with our Jimmy Dykes. Jimmy? Gary, how big a step is this for a guy that's trying to build a program at Rutgers? Tremendous step. I mean, we, we, we've been taking baby steps. Now it's a big step. How about this crowd that came 45 minutes away today to support you? Yeah, I tell you, they're unbelievable there. They're unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's where they are every day at the rack. Every time we play at the rack, they're there for us. The play at Quincy Doobie tonight, outstanding game offensively. In those timeouts, was it designed to keep the ball in his hands? Yes, yes. And so he can create either shoot or pass because he can do both things. All right, Coach, I'll let you go to your team and talk to Quincy for a minute. Quincy, in front of a crowd tonight, although it's an away game, I know you just felt confidence all evening long. Talk about in the flow of the offense tonight when you realize they can't guard me. Where did that happen for you? Um, I don't know. Um, they was playing zone. I had a, um, a couple of games this year. I had bad, bad games against the zone. I was just selling for long way shot. But I stayed in the gym long hours and just um, prepared real well for this game. And I was really prepared, and it showed today. How much of the changing defense of Iowa State got you guys out of rhythm in this ball game? Coach did a real good job at um, changing defense, but our coach, he told us like what defense they was running, and he was setting up different plays, and we were just executing it um, in important situations. Now there's another guy on the other side tonight from the same city, Curtis Stinson. Talk about his effort a little bit. Curtis Stinson, he's an awesome player. I played against him in prep school. He's a tough kid. He's a New York kid, and he showed it today. We, we just was battling. We was going hard at it. And he's, he's just a great kid. He's, he's a good player. All right, but I'll let you go before I do. I can tell you this. After watching you for 45 minutes, I do believe. All right, thank you. <laughs> Back to the studio. 
All right, Jimmy, thanks a lot. And I think there are a lot of people who do believe also after seeing Quincy Doobie. He certainly is for real. And, friend, you were talking about a little bit, but keeping the New York kids and the New Jersey kids in that area at Rutgers, and certainly they have an opportunity here with St. John's being down. Yeah. Is this a program you think can build off this? Well, everybody has always talked about the fact that Rutgers is a sleeping giant. If you have not seen a college basketball game in the rack on Rutgers' campus, you're missing something because it is a great atmosphere. And now, tonight, with Gary Waters getting a win in the NIT semifinals, it's a nice, he talked about a building block, it's a nice little bit of publicity in the New York area for one of their own to come home and have a huge game in Quincy Doobie. And again, they'll get another chance. They'll play for the NIT championship two nights from now, and they'll do so against the winner of our next game, Oregon and Michigan. That is coming up next, about 20 minutes from now. The second NIT semifinal. We will talk about that one, get Fran's thoughts on the game, and much more when we return. To Dave Repson. Okay, Ron, thank you very much. So very exciting first game there at Madison Square Garden. I am here with Fran Frischel. We'll get you back out to the Garden in a few minutes, 20 minutes between games here. So it'll be Michigan and Oregon going at it next. And I'll tell you what, an exciting one there and boding very well for Rutgers fans going forward here the next few years with what Quincy Doobie did. Well, we saw two great freshmen, Curtis Stinson for Iowa State, but Gary Waters is building a Rutgers program. He's going to have to do it around New York and New Jersey kids. Quincy Doobie is the first New York kid that he signed. Tonight, a career high 35. He's a brilliant shooter. Comes out of the great high school program, Grady High School in Brooklyn, and this is a good omen day for Rutgers basketball. Seton Hall has gotten it done with local kids. St. John's has to get it done with local kids, but it's a good sign for Gary Waters. Quincy Doobie He's a nice guy to build around. Yeah, first 20 win season for them since the 82 83 season, and they are still going. Gary Waters standing by right now with our Jimmy Dykes. Jimmy? Gary, how big a step is this for a guy that's trying to build a program at Rutgers? Tremendous step. I mean, we, we, we've been taking baby steps. Now it's a big step. How about this crowd that came 45 minutes away today to support you? Yeah, I tell you, they're unbelievable there. They're unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's where they are every day at the rack. Every time we play at the rack, they're there for us. The play at Quincy Doobie tonight, outstanding game offensively. In those timeouts, was it designed to keep the ball in his hands? Yes, yes. And so he can create either shoot or pass because he can do both things. All right, Coach, I'll let you go to your team. I'm going to talk to Quincy for a minute. Quincy, in front of a crowd tonight, although it's an away game, I know you just felt confidence all evening long. Talk about in the flow of the offense tonight when you realized they can't guard me. Where did that happen for you? Um, I don't know. Um, they was playing zone. I had a, um, a couple of games this year. I had bad, bad games against the zone. I was just selling for long range shot. But I stayed in the gym long hours and just um, prepared real well for this game. And I was really prepared, and it showed today. How much of the changing defense of Iowa State got you guys out of rhythm in this ball game? Coach did a real good job at um, changing defense, but our coach, he told us like what defense they was running, and he was setting up different plays, and we were just executing it um, in important situations. Now there's another guy on the other side tonight from the same city, Curtis Stinson. Talk about his effort a little bit. Curtis Stinson, he's an awesome player. I played against him in prep school. He's a tough kid. He's a New York kid, and he showed it today. We, we just was battling. We was going hard at it. And he's, he's just a great kid. He's, just, he's a good player. All right, but I'll let you go before I do. I can tell you this. After watching you for 45 minutes, I do believe. All right, thank you. <laughs> Back to the studio. All right, Jimmy, thanks a lot. And I think there are a lot of people who do believe also after seeing Quincy Doobie. He certainly is for real. And, friend, you were talking about a little bit, but keeping the New York kids and the New Jersey kids in that area at Rutgers, and certainly they have an opportunity here with St. John's being down. Yeah. Is this a program you think can build off this? Well, everybody has always talked about the fact that Rutgers is a sleeping giant. If you have not seen a college basketball game in the rack on Rutgers' campus, you're missing something because it is a great atmosphere. And now, tonight, with Gary Waters getting a win in the NIT semifinals, it's a nice, he talked about a building block, it's a nice little bit of publicity in the New York area for one of their own to come home and have a huge game in Quincy Doobie. And again, they'll get another chance. They'll play for the NIT championship two nights from now, and they'll do so against the winner of our next game, Oregon and Michigan. That is coming up next, about 20 minutes from now. The second NIT semifinal. We will talk about that one, get Fran's thoughts on the game, and much more when we return.